I'm going to be reading the translator's note which I wrote for the Tilted Axis edition of The Impossible Fairy Tale. In the winter of 2013, just as I was beginning the translation of The Impossible Fairy Tale, I happened to see a Korean literary critic's review of the novel. Although the review was positive, the critic noted that the story relied heavily on wordplay and in the end pronounced that such sections would unfortunately be lost in translation. She had voiced my own hidden fears that I had recklessly agreed to undertake the translation of a work that seemed to resist the very act of being translated. But in blind faith, I powered through, flagging any problematic sections to return to later if no solution presented itself at the time. A translation could never perfectly match the original, but I was determined to make the most of Han's intentions and allow the complexity of the text to survive in English. So when Han played on words the, to advance the story, I would ask myself what absolutely needed to be there, what I could not afford to lose. It is simply impossible, especially when dealing with double entendres, word scrambles, and half palindromes to keep every meaning. In the end, and in collaboration with Han, I emphasized what I felt were her main intentions, albeit sacrificing certain elements, and at times offering my own words to bridge the gaps that occurred when the text passed into English. Here's what I mean. The kitten looks up at the child with pretty eyes as though it has no idea why the, chi why the child has snatched her hand away. Kitty cat, kitty cat, kit cat cat. What does cat mean? Or kit? Tool kit, tools hurt. Hammer, wrench, screwdriver. The Korean starts off the same with the child thinking about the word koyangi, which means cat. In her obsessive way, the child strips down the word to the first two letter blocks Koyang, which means boost, flight, sacrificial lamb, replaces the initial consonant of the first block with the initial vowel of the second to create yagong, which means night assault, expands these two blocks into three again, creating yagogong, which means a baseball, and then reverses the last two blocks to arrive at kongu, which means tools. I was unable to retain these multiple layers of meaning while still preserving the logic Han uses to move from one word to the next. So I selected my own words, constrained by the need to begin with kitten or cat and end with tools. In the scene where the child kills a cat, the word pangul or droplet small bell does triple duty. It must describe the blood splattered on her shoes, it must be countable, and it must also be a popular playful name for cats. In Korea, cats are commonly named pangul. After racking my brain for days, I finally hit upon the word sprinkle. Her dirty running shoes are sprinkled with blood. One sprinkle, two sprinkles, three sprinkles. Hey sprinkles, she calls out to the kitten. Sprinkle here serves all three functions just as pangul does. However, as with the first example of kit and cat, it relies upon creative license. This brings me to several questions that nagged me during the entire translation. Was I faithful to the text? When I supplied my own words or phrases, even if to fill in the gaps in meaning, could this even be called translation? In her essay, Translation is a Practice, a practice of Acceptance, the seasoned translator Anita Raya says, the translator's greatest resource must be her own inventiveness. She isn't suggesting we take liberties or brand the text with our unmistakable touch, far from it. Accuracy must be foremost, but we should allow for some invention when we are confronted with impossible translational difficulty. That is my aim, fidelity, not just to the literal meaning, but also to the spirit of the original text. This February saw the French translation of the impossible fairy tale. I'm sure the French translators wrestled with the same issues that I did, puzzling over the best ways to clone this book into another language, and ultimately made their own choices. I would like to see the solutions they settled upon, what they had preserved, what they had been forced to sacrifice. Or better yet, I would like to see the inventiveness that other Korean to English translators would bring to the naughtier sections of the book. For it is with every different translation that the gap between the original and translation is closed, further and further still, yet never completely. 
Anita Raya says the translator knows her own limits and yet out of devotion, out of love, she is prepared to challenge them or at least she, she chooses to try. This translation is a result of that attempt, a humble, passionate and joyous attempt that I had the privilege of sharing this chilling, exquisite, mesmerizing tale with readers who otherwise would not have had access to the original.